Hello. Good evening. So my name is Daniel Mahler. I'm working for NTT Com Security, and we're talking about Internet of Things like all the day. Let's see if I can tell you something new. First of all, my presenter isn't working. Improvised. Thanks for your attention. <laughs> yep. That's not going to work. We're going to start this again. Let me give you an overview again. First of all, I will explain a little bit what Internet of Things is regarding some definitions. I don't want to go too deep into it because you all know what it is. We are going to talk about security aspects, which are, hmm, as we have seen, not quite implemented as we expected them to be. Then I want to take a small look into some power plugs, which are controlled, like the Internet of Things, via interesting protocols, not that custom like in other presentations we have seen there, but they somehow give you a unique access point, which might be quite interesting to see. And then I will sum it up in a conclusion. So let's get into the Internet of Things. I grabbed it from the Wikipedia, and it's not much of a deal. Internet of Things are devices, vehicles, buildings, and other items. So you have to realize we are talking about other items. What are these items? What, where, where are they implementing things where they are hidden? The problem with these things is that's not quite obvious. Sometimes you have to discover them first to realize there's a flaw in them. And since we're not hacking cars or vehicles or buildings at this point, we are trying to focus on home automation. So I try to get down to home automation. And I realized, well, what's home automation? It's residual extension of building automation. It involves the control and automation, lighting, heating, and so on, and so on, and security. So we are hooking up security in the Internet of Things. Hmm, that's food for thought. So let's break this up a little bit, just to give you a small aspect what global threat we might face. First of all, we're talking about smart cities, surveillance, security, traffic control, and so on. All it's getting hooked up to the internet. All it's building up some kind of attack um, wall where our um, adversary can fast break into it, try to yeah, get into it. Smart grid. We have seen several uh, talks now about smart grid, consumer control, energy control. That's kind of a nightmare. There are stories in the internet where they, are s where they are describing what would happen if we lose power from one day to another or lose power for a whole week. Thinking of that and the idea of connecting it to the internet might be another uh, thing to keep in mind. Then we have smart retail, so stock taking, smart shelves, advertising, and so on and so on. I, I just did a penetration test in a smart retail shop. And it was quite interesting. Once you get inside the network somehow, somewhere, you realize there are so many devices which might not be supposed to be there, which might be related to Internet of Things, which might have access points for you that um, pose opportunities to get inside, and especially for an attacker. And finally, we're talking about smart home. So consumer control, security, locks, cameras, and so on, all hooked up to the internet. I mean, if you crawl Shodan HQ, then you will see there are a lot of cameras, web cameras you can just put into your browser and you monitor someone else's home. That's the Internet of Things. Um, and we are talking about heating control and especially energy management. So let's get into it a bit. Security aspects. Asking the customer or the, the manufacturer at this point, and he states, the home network is secure. Ever heard this before, someone from your customers? I did just yesterday when I talked to someone, and they also agreed their network is secure, can be viewed as secure. We don't need any security aspects. 
So what about all these things we are working on in everyday life? Encryption, authentication, authorization, multi-client capability, privacy, et cetera, et cetera. So everything that's securing our day-to-day -day life business. Most of the time, it's completely forgotten with Internet of Things devices. Ever thought about autonomous cars controlled by CryptoLocker? I mean, autonomous cars can be viewed as Internet of Things. What, what would happen in worst case scenario? You can imagine it. I mean, if you are really into it, just draw an Internet of Things and leave the road of the highway. Uh, you can try it on uh, several occasions, but I don't suggest it. Or have you thought about smart homes and crypto locker? Everybody, anyone has seen this film? It's some kind of dystopia where you're locked into a room which is somehow foreignly controlled. You don't get out, and maybe some devices which initially discovered might prove to be a threat. So these are things which are not considered yet. I mean, let's just go a little bit back to this car concept. Imagine you are driving yourself on the highway, 100 miles per hour, and someone is just telling you, over the radio, we just hijacked your car. Please insert your credit card number, otherwise you will leave the road. I mean, that's some kind of opportunity for you to stay alive. So now let's go back to the first example. Question is why did we choose to hmm, yeah, review some kind of power plug? I have one lying here, one somewhere else. Why power plug? Because that's the crucial thing in our network. That's the basic thing we can use, we can abuse, we can improvise. It's an on and off switch. We can switch on and off a server. We can switch on and off the lights. We can switch on and off some things that create heat. And it's some basic thing that's used somewhere, it's everywhere, it's not quite sure where it is, but it proves to be a security threat. So, let's take this Belkin Wemo switch. A friend of mine just bought it on the internet, on Amazon. Um, it's way wireless LAN compatible, it uses UPnP protocol. Okay, we all know that UPnP is flawed regarding security. It's cloud compatible. Why is the power plug cloud compatible? Well, let's take a look a little bit later. It doesn't support authentication. Why should it? Direct communication is possible. Yeah, you can use your smartphone to switch on and off this power plug. And encryption is not really necessary. So let's take dig into it. First of all, discovering it. I was thinking about how to discover a, a power plug on my network. And I found this nice little script from Scapy. Someone else provided it, where you do a broadcast M search, you fire it on the network, and something returns, like this. But that's not a power plug. It's my Fritz box. It's my DSL router. That wasn't in intended to happen. And that's where I realized, uh, yeah, I also have Internet of Things devices which are not that configured like I wanted them to be, that secure that I wanted them to be. So I logged into my router, tried to enter, to, to disable the UPnP protocol, and first of all, I thought I'm just incompetent, I can't find the, the configuration. But later on, after digging a little bit in the manual, I just realized it's simply not possible to disable UPnP. Okay, so what's the problem with UPnP? Well, you can see it just here. It's disclosing a location. And the location is uh, HTTP, so you can connect, you, you can send a request via U UDP to the router on a high port, and it's disclosing some kind of configuration. Doing this on a VMO switch, and it would disclose you a lot of things. You don't have to read it all, but that it's just presenting you a lot of information and how to talk to it. So, anyone who's seen this? Binary state, zero? Okay, we're talking about an on and off switch. This could be the point where we put it on and off. Well, my colleague just 
took the SOAP request, constructed a SOAP envelope, and just put the request in it, so the, the, the one parameter binary state zero or one. He sent it to the um, power plug, and guess what happened? Let's try if I can present you a little bit. Oh, great, it works. So first of all, verb isn't responding. Verb is responding, it's not connecting. Wireless hmm. well, is not that great today. Well, it's messing with my head today. Failed. Failed to connect. Why? I can ping it. Um, let's take this one. Okay, that was it. So, like I said, a lot of data, a lot of information, and of course, the binary state. Power plug is responding at this point. You take your favorite intercept and proxy, proxy or zap attack proxy. Um, you go back, just send a request, you intercept it, and well, we just need some kind of binary state envelope, I heard. So we take this post request, we, oh. let me get a bit, we put it into our request, and whoa, that one is working so far. So switching light on and off is not a problem. We can also see that the, the power plug is responding. Everything works fine so far. I don't need that one. But let's get back to the presentation. I want to get back to the presentation. OK, just give it a second. Well, I just switched on a power plug. What's the basic thing? A power plug is capable of switching it on and off, and on and off, and on and off. Well, we successfully did this. So what went wrong here? Well, they obviously forgot the authentication. The manufacturer needs a solution at here at this point. Uh, they missed encryption, so anyone seeing this on the traffic can replay it and switch it on and off. Everyone on the network can do this again and again and again. So that might look funny, but how often does it happen that the device doesn't respond to you as you expect to it to happen? So it went off, but the power is on when you go there. It might be because someone switched it off while you were not looking. Or um, you have to imagine where is it placed, like it's used for a switch to create some kind of physical barrier. So someone remotely can disable a threaded network. If the attacker does this on the wrong time, this might be not so intended. I tried to set up this power plug for dummies, but I had my difficulties, and guess why? Wireless LAN security is not always recommended. I, I took a look into the manual because it doesn't work, it doesn't connect, lose connection, and so on and so on, and that's what's in the manual. Broadcast SSID, no hidden. Otherwise, Wemo may have difficulties connecting, maintaining a connection. Use, it supports WPA2 passwords, eight to 63 characters comprised of letters and numbers. What's missing? Special characters. We're telling them every year use special characters in your password. And what they are doing is, well, you can downgrade your security by clicking here. Downgrade your whole network security to use this power plug. Well, that's hmm, not what we want to. So let's get away a little bit from this power plug. I mean, it's controlled. It, it can be controlled via cloud. And the cloud infrastructure for my, my smart home, where all my devices are, is hidden and secure. And the programmer would probably say, yeah, right. Let's have a look at the Android app. 
I, I said you can use your smartphone, install an Android app, switch it on and off. And you find something like this. Hey, it's quite readable. And I, I mean, you see the comments there, which might not be supposed to be there, but honestly, production, jargon, quality assurance, staging, you want to disclose this to the whole world? You're from your cloud? Mm. It's production. Let's, let's take a look. OK, let's close one eyes, take another look. It's not going to get better. But we have an API, right? And that's hidden and secure. And the programmer might be a little bit uh, disturbed by our first discovery and say, well, it might be secure, I think. And then you take another look at the API of the mobile application and you just discover a lot of plugins to control the cloud. I mean, I'm not sure how secure every of these possibilities is, but there's just something like location search for my power plug. Is someone else supposed to search my power plug? Or what if I try to use any of these possibilities, put it into my burp attack browser, and start fuzzing? Do you think every one of these is secure? Well, hmm, not sure. Honestly, at this point, legal told me, just keep away from it. It's production. You can't hack a live system of that. OK, let's stop it. We have another power plug, right? We have the D-Link. And my colleague loves D-Link, and I started to love it too. Why? You will see. It's a wireless LAN power plug. It supports HNAP protocol, so they are. They have learned no UPnP, HNAP security. They require a cloud. Authentication is. Um, required, of course. Direct communication is not supposed to happen between my laptop and a power plug, just maybe through my app, through the cloud to the power plug. And encryption, local, yes, cloud, no, uh, other way around. Anyway, challenge accepted. Dealing is known to produce devices with vulnerabilities. The Wemo password already owned in the past multiple times. So what might be the dealing strategy to protect it? Of course, the usual thing, huh? train your developers, put a life cycle in it, pen test it, and certificate it, and what they are doing, hide the firmware so we cannot reverse engineer it. Hide it. It's hidden somewhere. Log into the web app interface is prevented by a login. OK, really? And uh, yeah, only control via cloud. Yes, no cloud, no power switch, except you go to there and hit it. I mean, how often do you realize the internet is gone? Honestly, it happens all the time to me. And if I want to switch off something crucial and the internet is gone, my power plug is gone. So let's think about it. How do we start to reverse engineer a firmware we don't have access to it? We, we start, we have a power plug, right? And the power plug is telling us something. A firmware query. Follow it. Hmm. Another firmware query. Binary. Follow it. Oh, download it. Hmm. Maybe a binary. Maybe a squash FS file system. Great. That's documented in the internet, so we don't have to do a thing. Except uh, you use on squash FS, you compile it with the right con decompression algorithm, extract the binary, and finally, we have a Linux box we can attack. So what do we do at this point? I mean, we have a file system for a not initialized power plug. Of course, we go to the shadow. We use John, we brute force the shadow, and we find uh, two accounts, root and admin. And after 30 seconds, it says the admin account uses the password 5up. I don't want to brute force anything because three digits of could take quite a long time. But anyway, the root password was quite secure. I mean, I gave it to the cluster of a friend of mine, and they weren't able to brute force it. So hmm, 
that's a good start. Let's, we, we dove into the, the file system a little bit more and found a library regarding HNAP protocol, and that's the security they're using, right? And we use EDA, start decompiling, and we find a function called set socket settings. I mean, it's a power plug, right? So we want to set settings. And digging a little bit into it, you find parameters like nickname for my power plug, description, maybe where it is, I lost it, and op status. Great, we have an op status, a binary state, op status, yeah, everyone takes its own description. Again, we construct a SOAP request. We put all these parameters in, like nickname, description, op status, and so on. And, well, should do it, right? But there is this hmm, lock-in. So what do we do about a lock-in? Well, how about we ignore it? I, I tried the password five up and said failed. Oh, that's strange. Okay, let's ignore the login and just send the request and it said unauthorized. Hmm, okay. Well, um, let's try it again. Hope this works. We had this login. Oh, great, it's responding. And username, admin, password. Hmm, admin. Hmm, lock in. Oh, it takes longer. No, doesn't work. Any suggestions? We have a root account, right? How about root root? Hmm, nope. Any suggestions? Throw it at me. Nothing. Lock in? Well. Yeah, that's how I got my firmware. <laughs> Great. So, we have a login, right? What do we do with the login? So, I tried to send a request to the um, power plug again with the SOAP request, and I got an error message. Uh, let's um, try it again. I'm just trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to intercept the request. Uh, maybe just the main request. Uh, jump. It's intercepted. We take a um, nope. We take a request. That's our soap request with nickname and so on and so on. Ops that is true. We want to send. We start something, right? Mm. Oh, let's take the whole request. That's better. The post is better than a get. Everyone forgets about the post. Forward. Um, mm, no, that's not what I wanted. Hey, don't ignore me. That's the wrong system. Somehow this other power plug keeps my attention. Okay, again. I want to go there. Yep, that's correct. I want to send my request. Not authorized, it's missing. So authorization with root and no password already worked, but we get an error. Well, it's not very descriptive, um, but why should it? No one should ever see it. So what's wrong here? Well, it's the HNAP. It's creating some kind of string, which is uh, created in the browser and created with a handshake to the server, in this case, the power plug. So we try to this, um, this, uh, disassemble the library, we try to reverse engineer the algorithm, creating it, but that's not that easy, and we are lazy, so we wanted to find a fast track. And, yeah, what, what can you do if the script is in the browser, and it's a handshake with the power plug, and you want to create some, you want to use another function? Well, first of all, you need another function. So we go back to the firmware, and we find functions functions like set socket options and so on. But how do we trigger these functions? Well, we could do it in the response, right? Hmm. Okay. So, again, we intercept the request. So good so far, we forward it. Um, we get a response, 
and we want to modify the response. And after doing a little research and so on and so on, you just have to put these inside the web, uh, uh, the web response, which is sent from the socket to your browser. So edit, select all. Forward it to our browser, ignore the rest. That's where everything fails. Oh, it's working. And that would be like, hmm, well, you just created your own interface to your power plug. And what happens now if I s select the set socket settings? I intercept it. Aha, same problem like yesterday. Exactly the same problem like yesterday. Somehow the browser messed it up. But that's not a big problem. Hmm. Yeah, keeps popping up forward. Again, I want to select. Yeah, it might be in a cache, but forward it to my browser, intercept the request. It uh, doesn't like me. Well, in the end, it sends the request to the power plug and it creates this hnap string for me. So at this point, I don't have to create a hnap string. I don't have to circumvent their security. The browser generated the string for me and I just have to insert the XML I just created from the SOAP request. So, um, this is not working. I intercept the request, and in the end, it looks like mm, oh, there it is. So when, like I said, it, it will mainly generate you the first part of it, and then you just have to attach the XML, which is related, and you get an unauthorized. So why do I get an unauthorized? Yeah, of course, um, hmm, because I forgot to enter root, right? Okay, one more time. Hmm. Enter root, log in, very cryptic password. Yeah, that worked. Intercept my request, forward it, and get an error. Hmm. Okay, just give me one more time. After that, I will just explain what happens. Again, I'm locked in because I don't get an unauthorized. I want to get, that's, that's all right, I want to get the request. Normally, I would just modify the response, edit, select all, edit, copy, paste, forward it to my browser. My browser gives me a button. I want to intercept the button. Let's make sure it's root. Hmm. Anyone knows why at this point my button is not working? Hmm. No. Well, too bad. Anyway. Ah, ah, yeah, you are so right. My request is missing the HTML. Someone didn't copy the whole. Yeah. Hmm. But I want it. So I think I've recorded it. Yeah, I'm cheating. Error. It's also giving me an error. It's also giving me an error. But I recorded it. Hmm. Ah, you are so right. It's always the same. Uh, forward connection. I don't see a cookie. Yeah, okay, because I don't have it locked in. Hmm. 
not bulletproof for hacking, I think. Um, okay, at this point, I've locked in. Mm, let's try something. If it doesn't work, well, we just have to skip it at this point. It doesn't like me. Well, too bad. Anyway, nothing is perfect. So at this point, normally something switches on or off. And it worked, even if you don't have seen it, sadly. Mm. Oh, come on. Stop doing this. So, sum it up. The conclusion was, we took a look at the Belkin and the encryption was not accessible, authorization failed, and so on and so on. Um, we sent a UPnP request, we got an XML back, how to communicate with the power plug, we created our SOAP request, and the light went on. The same should have done in the D-Link. If, if you try a little bit, you will see it works. You log in without a password, which is a problem in itself. You get an XML back with a link to the firmware. You go to the web server of Billing, you get your firmware, you disassemble it in EDA, Magic, and so on. You get your SOAP request. And then you have to extract the functions because you want to generate the HNAP in the browser so you can um, send a valid request with a valid cookie and a valid HNAP and our SOAP. And that's the tricky part um, to the Z-Link, and well, it will also work. So, conclusion. Yeah, you might say power plugs are boring, right? But I think it really depends on what's connected to it, right? Or where it's hidden, or maybe what's really sucking the power out of it. And these are just two tiny examples of 50 billion devices around the world. Just just a rough estimation. So if you go there, you just start scanning with UPnP, you'll find a lot of devices which have multiple problems. And that's for thought, because if you find these with Shodan, they are reachable on the internet, and someone finds a vulnerability in them and starts to switching them on and off, and on and off, and on and off. Millions of devices, sucking power. Maybe with a location search, so he can control where he puts the power on and off and on and off. This might prove to be a problem for the power network or for the people working, living there, which already have winter. So, two power plugs, security didn't work. But then we took a look a bit, lit, little bit look around. I mean, they, they know it's, it might not be that secure because they suppose, so assume that the home network is secure and you find something like this on the internet. They are promoting to use the iron link flat to, in combination with the power plug, which we just proven that it's not a good idea because if you leave your home and you want to shut it off, someone switches it on again. So at this point, we just thought, well, power plug failed, another power plug failed, the marketing failed, and we don't really know. We just keep it away. But I want to anchor, encourage you, take a look at the Internet of Things devices and find common vulnerabilities, which are yeah, kind of generic for all devices, and report them to the vendors. Because these things are installed in our homes, they are installed close to your children, and they are hidden, so you don't exactly realize they are Internet of Things. And this might prove to be a bad prank if someone hacks it and just yells at your kid. But it might prove lethal if it controls something in your home. Thank you for your attention. And, well, in a few minutes we have barbecue. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>